So, hi everyone. Um, it's a bit strange being here. As she just said, I just graduated from university, but I am managing this project. It's called Open Source Studio. Uh, it is our online learning and content management system. I am actually a graphic designer by training, but delve into a little bit of code, not much, just know a little bit of HTML5 and CSS. So not coming from a very big tech background. Uh, before we begin, I want to show you this image of a studio. This is Pablo Picasso's studio. And him, like many artists before him, used a large studio space to research, ideate, experiment, and ultimately create some form of art. Uh, and uh, the studio of now is kind of different, isn't it? I mean, you could pretty much have a virtual studio. Uh, uh, all you need is a network personal computer catalyzing an instantaneous flow of information. And this studio exceeds well beyond the horizon, if you would have it. It's not in the physical landscape anymore. And the artist incorporates telecommunications, social media, digital storage capacities, cloud-based file directories, and virtual desktop space. And this enables the artist to make room to roam in a way. You know, you're not in the physical realm anymore. Uh, of course, therefore, a singular artist can run an entire practice from the web. Uh, that is, that artists can research, ideate, experiment, and ultimately create from a virtual studio. Uh, you don't need real estate to create art. And what is more exciting for me is that you don't need real estate to teach it. Um, so learning in the media arts is not linear. Arts education is in no way linear. Knowledge doesn't flow in one direction. Uh, students have traditionally learned in a manner where the teacher teaches and the pupil learns. But if you think about the arts, and even if you go back to the Renaissance, arts have always been a collaboration. The artist and the apprentice always work together to create content or to create art. Uh, in that manner, an artist learns by doing. Uh, we don't learn in that one way in which, in info which information flows. So the process is so organic that usually, even in an art school in the 21st century, the tutor and pupil collaborate. And uh, therefore, there is a need for a content management uh, online that is a bit different from the other tools that are available. So things like Blackboard and all of that, they have their value, but they're in my opinion, knowledge only flows in one direction over there. So uh, we needed a system that encourages users to create content. And it needed to be a system that was also administered by a tutor. Um, so there we have it. We created Open Source Studio. Uh, Open Source Studio is a collaborative online software environment. It is designed to meet the needs of studio-based teaching at the School of Art, Design, and Media in NTU. Uh, OSS was developed as a prototypical multi-site WordPress content management system, which is situated on the school's network. Each student uh, is provided with one WordPress site in the beginning of that class. So how we function is we give each student a site, the student creates content, and then their content is aggregated into a class site. Uh, so this is this can be a little complicated for people who have not used much of multi-sites. But to simplify it, here is what our projected framework looks like. So you'll see, uh, as I said, I'm from a graphic design background. So I try to make this as simple as possible. Every student gets a site. That student site feeds into the class site. The content from the student site, all the posts they make, go into relevant class sites. And the class site is administered by the faculty member. So the faculty manages the site. Now, eventually, what we want to do is create an institution site. So uh, the class site would feed into what we call an area site, and then the area site would feed into what we call 
the institution portfolio. So I'll get to that in a bit, but this is the basic framework. Um, and now I'll run you through how we do this. So this is a student site. This is the site of a student who recently graduated uh, from visual communication. Um, I just wanted to show you this site for a few reasons. One of them being that we enable students, art students, to document their work. So uh, they can archive their work by tags, by categories, and just by time. Uh, so here. And you'll see how exhaustive this documentation is uh, for every student. And uh, in the arts, it is important that you document your work. It's, uh, your projects are often ephemeral, so you need to document. And this site enables the artist to access their own work, not just create and document it, but to access it. Because usually, over a span of four years in school, you would have created a lot of content, which is almost impossible to find after you graduate. Uh, what this site lets you do is find your work uh, using basic WordPress database tools like tags and categories. Now, this has revolutionized the way students work in ADM right now uh, because uh, not only can they find their own content, but once all their research and work is in one place, it's so much easier for them to connect the dots, and uh, then the idea is born automatically. It's pretty much already there. So that's the student site. Now I'll go back from there. But of course, uh, this is a, a class site. This is a class called Media and Performance. Uh, we, so we give faculty tools to work with their students and organize their information. Here we see the crux of how Open Source Studio works. Uh, so as I said, we have all the registered students on the left here. Then all their recent posts are in the middle. All the posts that they're making in that class and announcements that the faculty make are on the right. Uh, on the top up there are also like content that is relevant to the course. Uh, how we do this, uh, I will talk about in a second, but um, we use a custom aggregator plugin that we've got hard coded into each class site. Uh, and this makes viewing, commenting, organizing, and ultimately grading student work so much easier. Like, for example, the faculty organize the student's content. So things like final project, project hyper essay, research, touch, all of that is faculty Organi organization of categories for students' work. Now, once students post over there, faculty can easily grade them by clicking on final project, and all the posts under final project show up. So very, very important database tools that we use here. Now, this is actually, we have never uh, ever revealed our custom aggregator before, but this is our custom aggregator plugin. Uh, and this enables us to pull all student posts onto the relevant class sites. How we do this, of course, aggregation source, as you can see, says registered students. But here, where it says child category, uh, we've got the category, which is the name of the class. So that's the slug that is given to this class. And it picks up relevant posts. More importantly, uh, you also have the opportunity to pick up metadata, like uh, things like categories, comments, tags. And once you have this data, I always like to say this, data is power. Like if you have method to harness data, you can do a lot with it. So we have access to all of that. Um, and in terms of, of course, organizing student content, I showed this earlier. Uh, but. We use a mass category generator called class categories. So how this works is that the instructor creates these categories in the beginning of the class. So say, for example, it says final project presentation, project one, two, three. Uh, and these categories are made in the class site, but they get pushed into the student site. So on the here, you see what the class categories look like on the class site. They will own. Uh, but once they're created, they only show up in the dashboard of the student site. I know it's a bit complicated here, but the student makes posts to that class site. 
and they pick this category when they make the post. When they pick the category, the post goes into the class site, and it shows up like this. As I said, it's a, uh, you can see it says project one emo and presentations, because those are the two categories these students in this class that is actually going on at this time. Uh, they're having the same class, but I'm pulling up their site right here. Um, so this is very, very exciting, uh, especially because faculty can grade work so easily, and secondly, because students have access to their work. Uh, but none of this actually makes sense when you look at this interface from a student perspective. Like, five years from now, I will probably not remember project one was emo or it was what. So the students need to be able to organize their own content. And our interface is very student-centric in that way. Uh, we let students, and this is just basic WordPress, we encourage them, in fact, to tag their work. And once they do that, they create these impressive tag clouds that almost like the one I showed you earlier. Um, but this is great in another way in terms of education, because we're teaching students to apply standardized taxonomies and other effective database tools uh, to document their media work, which makes it so much easier to uh, retrieve, present, and even evaluate and uh, see how much progress you've made. So. Of course, I said student-centric, but eventually the, the aim of this is to uh, facilitate learning. Uh, even though it is co-creation, as some would like to call it, uh, we do provide tools to faculty to create uh, content. So some custom post templates, like this is the custom post template for a syllabus. Uh, uh, so it. It's pretty simple. Everything, every section has a name. Uh, and you can add sections. You can delete sections. So you'll notice it says description, assignments, outline, readings, and miscellaneous. Uh, you can also edit the names. You can do whatever you like. You can go to town with it. Um, but what this enables is for faculty to use this in their own manner. And there are two ways that faculty have used these kind of posts, these custom posts. Uh, one is a simple sy syllabus feed. So let me show you what this syllabus feed actually looks like. This is just a sample site I set up. Uh, so here it is. So it says description, assignments, outline, readings. You just saw these right now. But what is great is that the student in the middle of the semester doesn't need to read the description and the outline. So you can just like find the assignments and get, get to business. So uh, of course, there is that. Uh, that is the most simplest way of using uh, the syllabus, the custom post template that we've made for the syllabus. Of course, some faculty use it in a very creative way. Um, so here we have what we call the weekly syllabus feed. Uh, the faculty have compiled the whole syllabus for the whole semester and broken it down into weeks. So here is an example of a syllabus. Uh, you'll notice that every week has a name and a little bit of this, uh, a little bit of description. What this is actually is each custom post pa uh, uh, syllabus page in a feed. So you'll see for this class, the faculty is actually teaching right from OSS. Uh, so they have the assignments and they have the outline for the class. So what is going on, relevant links, and things like media, everything is in one place. Now, why this is important for us is because this never moves. So even after you've graduated, you will have access to this site and to this content, uh, which is very, very nice, I would say, because I just graduated. And I, would, I love being able to go back and see all my content. Uh, of course, uh, uh, so great part of artistic practice is to be able to showcase your work at different stages. Uh, therefore, we also let the faculty create a showcase of student work via galleries. Uh, these are custom page templates. Uh, they're curating art in a class on a virtual studio. So. Uh, at least in the School of Art, Design, Media. And in most schools, space is limited. But when, once you can do this on the virtual studio, it's quite 
impressive. Now, the gallery works. I'm not going to go deep into how the back end of the gallery works, but the basics is that we aggregate student work. Again, the student does the work. They post it. You don't need to do anything. They post the work, and we just aggregate it using a short code and using one of the class categories like that, that I showed before. Um, so that is the gallery. Now, what we hope to achieve uh, is that finally, students can be like Picasso in his big studio. They can research, ideate, experiment, and even create from a virtual studio. Uh, as I said, real estate is not required when you're creating art. Uh, it is beautiful to see what students would end up with at the end of four years of uh, school. Uh, and the data they generate uh, can not only create a powerful student portfolio, but also be aggregated into class sites. Uh, now, the next step forward for OSS is that we're not just aggregating data into class sites. We're moving on to aggregate curated data. So this gallery that you saw would be aggregated into what we call an area site, which is, say, interactive media or animation or graphic design. Each area would have their own site. And every year, you would be able to see what that whole area created on that one site using WordPress. Uh, so eventually, what we're striving towards is an institution portfolio uh, or an academic portfolio for an entire school. The possibilities are endless, and all it takes is for the students to use their sites and the aggregator plugin to do all the work, uh, which is exactly what we're working towards right now. That's all from me. Any questions? Is there any questions? Is there any questions for Vishaka? Um, I used to be a high school teacher, so my question is how um, easy was it to get both your um, students and the faculty to actually use the system and use it consistently? Oh yes. Uh, um, it is initially hard to get faculty to move, especially in, in an art school, it's hard for faculty to move from analog to uh, digital. However, once the ball started rolling, it was a snowball effect. So one faculty member told the other, and the other told the other. But of course, we had to run exhaustive like uh, orientation sessions, which usually last about an hour. And with the students, they're oriented in their first year. Uh, so uh, because not all students would know how to use WordPress, uh, so I usually conduct an orientation with like Last few weeks, I conducted an orientation with 180 students, but it was an, it was a one-hour orientation. And then after that, once the faculty start integrating OSS into their assignments, like by asking for projects to be submitted online instead of you know thumb drive or handed in, it becomes pretty easy. Students really roll with it. They they love using the internet and they love like being able to put things in one place. So um, it's not that difficult. Once it starts, it's, it's, it's a snowball effect. Yes? Um, do you, does it get interface at all with um, NTU, like the, on, the university's system? Uh, does end up having to work with multiple platforms? So right now, I mean, we've, this, this project is still quite new. And we're actually in the process of integrating it with NTU Learn, which is the uh, in-house uh, uh, student space, like it's a student online space where students can do a lot of things at. Uh, but it's going to take a while to integrate it completely. Uh, but that's the plan for the next five years, yes. There was another question there. You mentioned going from analog to digital. What are the tools he used? Uh, 
I mean, it depends on how you want to document art. This actually just moves into art documentation. It's uh, images, videos, audio, uh, um, multimedia pretty much, yeah. And text or whatever, you know. Uh, some people use ISU. Do you guys know ISU? It's that flip page uh, uh, online. It's a website and... Uh, you can embed that directly into OSS. Uh, you can embed images directly into OSS. You don't need to upload the media anymore. So it, it's quite easy to use, I would say. Yes? Uh, how do you ensure uh, consistency and quality across mm -hmm. all the articles? Uh, you mean in terms of content? Yeah. Do you have a set of guidelines? I mean, the only guidelines the university in enforces is no cyberbullying and uh, no, you know, profanity that is abusive to a certain race, caste, culture. Uh, the basic guidelines of being a human being on the internet. Um, <laughs> uh, the rest is uh, it's depending on the class. So it it's. As I said, we let the class site be administered by the faculty. So they are kind of like the curator, moderator, uh, everything, uh, almost content generator in a way because they know how, what they want to be created in that class. So eventually content can be created and decided by the faculty. Uh, so we let the faculty, because they understand their content even more than we do. So it's eventually in the hands of the faculty to create ensure what kind of content is going up. But we do let students also post their own work under their own uh, uh, category. But eventually, they just follow the university guidelines. Any other questions? All right. If not, uh, let's give Vishaka another big hand.